Welcome to Techsplained, my new video series where I attempt to demystify technical trail riding by hopping off the bike and discussing concepts such as line choice, points of no return, and islands of safety using real-world trail examples. In the end, a technical trail is just a complicated puzzle and it's your job to solve it. So let's get started. Alright, today, let's talk about riding chutes. And I don't know of a better trail than Bullet Dodger for that. Because it has five different chutes, all with their own little twist. And it's always a good idea to ride fun trails that are slated for development as much as you can. So, what is a chute? Now, it may seem pretty self-explanatory, but in my mind, a chute is a steep piece of trail, usually dirt, where you cannot stop. Simple as that. So, there's a clear, usually, point of no return, and a clear island of safety that you want to make it to. And a bullet dodger, as I mentioned, has quite a few of those. And about, I don't know, six or seven years ago, I lived in a much flatter province that didn't have anything that would remotely qualify as a chute. So I had to learn, largely on this trail, how to ride this kind of terrain. And that's what I want to show you today. So we're already here at the first of the chutes. Let's take it apart. Okay, so the first thing I see is that the ride around is on the left, so if I ever didn't feel comfortable, I could always go left. Or even center and then left. But the chute here is actually a bit of a double chute. And the first move goes down to that island of safety there, which is a quite gravelly, relatively flat corner. And the key here is that, well, first of all, there are three ways to ride it. So you could come around far left, far rider's left, cut in around this tree, and then make the corner. Now this is quite an easy line in terms of your wheels are always on the ground, but it's hard because the exit corner would be quite tricky as it's quite sharp and unsupported. Now, you could also take the rut line, and that is, unfortunately, what will funnel a lot of riders in, because it is kind of like the lowest energy line in some nerdy way. But the problem with that is that you don't have a ton of control when you're in the channel, and if you turn against the channel, you could pretty easily crash. Not to mention, you then have a double root step, and the corner gets a little bit sharper. So, as you probably guessed, the line that I would point riders to here is rider's right. So this log right here, when you look at it from my perspective, somewhat looks like a drop, but the farther rider's right you go, it is actually rollable, and what that does is it opens up the corner quite nicely. So as long as you can get out of the trough and onto this high point, you can ride it, open up the corner, and then go into the second part of the chute. Now, the second part is actually a little bit easier than the first. It's a pretty obvious entrance where it troughs out into a nice V, and once you go past the point of no return, you are kind of in it. And thankfully, again, there's a pretty intuitive exit line, and you just go right where that rock is rolling. So all in all, not too bad. The key is definitely to pick a line that allows you to take the gravelly catch berms and in a safe and controlled manner. So let's go get it. Okay, coming in from the steep part above, I want to use this flat part to scrub off as much speed as possible. And then I'm now in the rut, but I want to get out of the rut, so I get off the brakes, roll down the chute, and look around the corner. The key is to always look around these flat corners, and then you're more likely to make them, whereas if you stare at the gravel, there's a good chance that you slide. That's number one. Let's go up to number two. Okay, after a quick climb, we're at chute section number two. And as usual, you fir the first thing you want to look for is what the easy line is. So in this case, it's pretty obvious. It's the far rider's right line and that'll allow you to control your speed the best and come out safely. Now, there's never any shame in taking the easy line because not everyone has perfect riding days every time and it's better to be safe than sorry. So moving up to the, what I call the BCD lines, or actually the other way around. That's the D line. This would be the C line. So this is previously the most ridden line. And what happens is as soon as you start going down here, this is sort of your point of no return because it's a bit steep gravel. And usually people are making the turn on that rock section and then going down the chute into the corner that you can see through the trees. Now, the reason that this line is pretty hard is because it's a very consistent grade, which means you don't really have any islands of safety and you don't have a whole lot of support on these rocks as evidence on all the, by all the skid marks that are on them. So fun line, but overall not my favorite. Now the B line is what I'm going to call it. This is a new braid. We're not going to talk about that. It's kind of the same thing. But the B line comes down from the top on slightly more riders left, 
down this little channel into this pocket. And this pocket acts as an island of safety. So you have a bit of a steeper section, an island of safety, and then your pick of line here. But truthfully, once you're here, it's quite hard to make the corner back into the uh, sea line. So most people will go down this little channel and then make the left-hander there. Now, the reason that this is tricky is because, if I can get down there, this channel is actually reasonably deep. And you don't want to catch your pedals, you don't want to catch your derailleur. You just want to be dead center, super confident going into that. And then once you make that, there's actually a bit of a negative camber corner off of this route. Thankfully, it's not exposed. And then you make your way around the corner. So all in all, it's not a truly horrible line, but you are in it for quite a while, definitely longer than the first one. And you want to be confident at the point of no return that you can make it to the island of safety down here without a problem. And there is also an A-line. So on the farthest rider's left, you can actually hop right beside the tree up there. And what that does is it makes the top part even steeper and you have the same catch berm, same exit. Now, I like the A-line because I would prefer to ride steeper but shorter features with islands of safety in between rather than bigger, more consistently shallower features. So that's what I'm gonna do. Let's get it. Okay, going into the A-line, I wanna stay quite high in an easy gear so that I can pedal. And then once I can see the line, which is now, I wanna pop in, brake my brake in the pocket, and then I can control my speed on the exit, let off the brakes to go around the corner. And that is shoot section number two. Super fun. Whew. It's a little bit of a sneaky gap right here that I saw from Sullivan. <laughs> Definitely wanna know that's there before just blindly doing it. Whew. This section's a little bit awkward and definitely worth a quick talking point, but you see that there's a route here on the trail. Now, there's two options. You can either go over it with your front tire or around it with your front tire, but no matter what you pick, your rear tire is gonna go over it. Now, I like keeping my wheels on the ground as long as possible because then I feel like I'm in the most control. So I will take my front wheel around this route and inside of this one, but my rear wheel is just gonna cut the corner because that's what it does. So something that's a little bit missed in most of my POV, but there's a lot of little details like this that really make the trail more fun and a little bit easier. So coming here, I wanna get my front tire around, rear tire's just gonna roll over it, and then you can straighten it out. Ew. Wow, that was pretty bad. <laughs> All right, to get to the next chute, we have a bit of a step down and then double. So a step down is a little bit slower than trail speed. And then we want to hold speed as much as possible for this little setup pre-jump. And if you get the setup pre-jump correct, then you can pull for the big one. So pre-jump and then big one. Woo! <laughs> Took me a few years to learn that one, but it's really not too bad. Here you want to watch your left pedal, because if it scrapes that log, you would not have a good time. Oh, bullet dodger is great fun. A couple pockets here. Phew! <laughs> And then a death skinny log thing. Oh, he's pretty terrifying. And this section's where a long travel bike really shines. Because you can jump in and then hold your speed through all of this very rough stuff right here. And then hit the corner, go around, and feel a bit like a superhero. Hit. <laughs> Coming up here, that, I don't know what that is. Not sure, maybe a poop. Avoid a route on that drop. And then there's gonna be a big bridge here, but a tree took it out sadly. So I'm gonna have to go around. And then after this little ride around, we are at chute number three, which I would say most people are the most afraid of. So let's pick it apart. So the first thing you see at the what I'm gonna call a crux chute is there's a lot of line choice, it's quite wide and it actually is only half done by the time you get to that stump down by the sunlight. So starting up here, we're gonna look at it from the bottom in a minute, but I like to go high left. There's three lines, high right, center, and high left, but high left is the best line, in my opinion, because once we creep down here, this is largely creepable, except in the middle of summer when it's all dusty, it gets you high on this section. So when you are going, oh, I don't know if I can stop on my feet. This is a better, better representation. So if you stay in the chute, this rock right here is either gonna catch your pedal, your foot, which is not good, 
or your derailleur, which is expensive. So if you stay in the chute, which is like in the, in the channel, which is the most intuitive line because it kind of funnels you there, then you risk hitting that and that could be either expensive or a bit of a, mm, some time off the bike. But if you stay high riders left, you have the choice to either roll down, either along this route or a little earlier, or do the fun line, which I quite like, which is creeping here. And then at this point, you can pull over that route and hit the corner or you can land on the bank and then hit the other bank as a means of speed control. So the point of no return on this chute is actually not the top. I would say it's this notch right here because I've seen many people stop before it. But once you've crossed this notch, you generally want to go all the way to the bottom before touching your brakes. And this is where people are most likely to crash. So this rock is a great example. You can see all the striations on it from people skidding. Now, a lot of people have target fixation and they look right at that stump. And that will definitely make you crash. What you wanna do as you're coming down here is roughly around where my hand is, you wanna start letting off of the brakes a little bit and looking at your exit. So the exit is pretty obvious. You wanna look at the trail right where it narrows back down to single track. And then this chunky section, you can honestly go just about wherever. So people tend to get a little hung up on this section and making sure they get the perfect line. But I've probably taken every line over the last, I don't know, 70 times I've ridden this trail. And there's never been any issue because if you lean back and let the bike do its thing, even if you're on a pretty small bike, like an XC bike, you'll be fine. So it looks pretty bad from the bottom here because a lot of these rocks have back faces that are like little drops or steps. But if you pick it apart, you'll see that not many rocks, even this one, only have small lips on them. So largely this section is gonna ride quite smooth. It's just a bunch of downhill steps and not much for your front wheel to get caught up on. So the key, as I mentioned, is once you are at the corner, at the, like the mouth, mouth, is that a word? Once you're at the start of the corner, you want to get off of the brakes a little bit so you don't slide on the gravel. Look for your exit and then you will go straight to your exit. <laughs> let's, uh, let's show you what that looks like. Okay, starting from the top, we wanna to cut over to the left and do not want to get caught in the channel. So here I can test my braking ability and like I can stop pretty well there. So I'm feeling pretty good about this today. If I want to do the fun move, I can creep up to it, pop at the last second, hit the opposite corner. And now I look at the exit, let off the brakes, let the bike do its thing. And there you go, shoot number three. It's a pretty big move. You're definitely in it for quite a while, which is what makes it scary again, but nothing exceptionally difficult about it. I would argue the next two are more technically difficult. Little off camber bridge. It's a little weird jump here. If it's not overgrown, it's actually pretty easy. You just kind of like trail speed over it. <laughs> and it just takes you to flat. Couple tight corners in here. And you definitely want to be hitting pockets and opening things up. Except for this one, I actually like going high here, as it's a bit more fun. And you got a tight corner, probably the hardest corner. A little flat spot. And then we are at shoot number four. So I'm gonna put my bike down a little back here. Now shoot number four is the one I see people crash the most often on. And the reason for it is the entrance is actually pretty chunky. So you can control your speed well through here and well all the way to here. And this route is your point of no return. So immediately I see this big route right in the middle of the line and I want nothing to do with it. So I'm gonna to try to find ways around it. Now the first one people look at is the left, but the problem with that is that you're probably not gonna to go to the right of that big rock, which means you're gonna to go to the left and you're gonna to have to go around to the right and do a quite tight chicane around this lower rock. And a lot of this stuff is pretty moon dusty even though it's like freshly rained, but you don't want to be chicaning that rock at speed. So looking at all the marks here, I want to stay clear of this, which leads me to the line that has some rock work on it. Now there's two ways to get over to that line. Uh, I like probably what's the more common line, which is going right over the low point of this route, because there's nothing to get hung up on if you go right here and it's not super perpendicular, well, it is perpendicular to trail. It's not super parallel. So controlling your speed here, you can, you can creep with your front wheel pretty well and get quite a bit of traction on the rock. 
and that gives you the least amount of speed for the shoot. I've also seen, I believe it was Alistair, take a higher line here where you come all the way here and you avoid the route by just avoiding it right at the top. Now, I think this is quite a good line and it actually straightens things out even better and it makes it so that once you're past the point of no return, there's one less thing to worry about because you're already past the route versus having to cross it. But the problem is that your bars are going to be pretty close to this tree and I don't want to play games with that, so let's do what I'm going to call the main line. Okay, maintaining speed after the previous section, I'm going to aim for that low spot in the big root, and that's where I'm going to keep my eyes on. I'm actually a bit too far left, so I'm going to go over to the right a little bit. I'm going to aim for that spot. You can slow down quite well, and now you're in it. So here I want to be looking for my exit. You kind of have to stay in the middle, right in the channel, and then there's an awful route here, so I want to go high and then cut left, or cut right rather, because that is the ride around for shoot number five. This is the main line. So let's go check it out. So shoot number five is almost certainly the most technical and the most body language is required, which means being very nimble on your bike. And the reason is because there are two big steps right here. Actually three if you count that one lower down. So first let's look at the alternate lines. The ride around is the far line, which you have to get in quite early and is actually pretty tough because you're going to carry some speed in shoot number four. But if you come down here, the easiest line is likely starting on the inside here and going down this route straight to that little channel and then squaring off the corner. Now that's not going to be very pretty, but I think it's going to be a little bit nicer than taking that line. Because what I've seen people do is they come wide here because that's sort of the intuitive line that you get funneled into. And then you go around the rock, but around the rock is a bit dangerous because you could hit your, your foot or you could hit your derailleur. And the corner's no good anyway, as you can see people skidding out into the dust. So I don't love these lines. I don't think they're very fun to ride, uh, but the A line is certainly worth discussing. So looking down here, you always want to look at the, at the runout and see what kind of quality it is. This is very gravelly, uh, very rooty. In fact, we will just take a quick look at that. And in the wet, this is, this is quite scary because you don't truly know the exact line you're going to take. It's a bit of a spider web of roots. So you want to be controlling your speed into this section. Now, Looking back up there, it's not super nice, but what you can pretty easily identify are your braking zones. So this compression right here is somewhere you can apply the brakes quite hard. So I'm going to expect to do that to slow down for the root ball. And then up here, you have the double step. So this one, not too bad. You kind of get funneled into it, but this one is pretty tough. Now, depending on your riding style, if you like to lean back, and just plow your way through things, let the bike deal with it. I would honestly recommend just straight up double step. Now, each of these is, you know, a good, I don't know, 60 centimeters or something by the time you're, you're down them. So it's quite a rodeo to do this double step. And it's also pretty hard to get into because you have to come in quite high to straighten out for the step. And I don't love riding that way. I'd rather ride more finesse, less smash. So the way I like doing it is coming down right here. And this part is fully rollable, so you're going to be in control. You're going to have at least one wheel contact at all time. And then the top step, you can reach your front wheel out. So you have both wheels on the ground. You reach the front out with the back on the ground, touch the front down, and then you always have one wheel contact. So I like that way, but it is definitely a little bit harder in terms of, I don't know, slow speed bike handling. Uh, so whatever you like. But if you want to do the double step, you want to come in quite uh, far outside here, which means cutting the corner. And if you want to do the line that I like doing, you can come quite far outside because you're going to want to aim right about here. So this is your point of no return. And your, your truthful island of safety is probably after that root ball. But generally, I advise you keep going because there is one more feature after that. So let's get it. Okay, coming in from shoot number four, control our speed, go down here, control our speed more, and now I'm looking for where I want my front wheel to be. And I pointed at it, so I'm going to creep up to it, but as soon as my front tire goes over that, I'm going to want to reach out, so right about here, reach out, brake, 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 in the pocket, brake, 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 in the compression, and now I have control to pick whatever line I want through the root ball. It's still a little bit loose, so I just want to look ahead, not be too heavy on the brakes, 
And this is what people call the rock drop, but it's 100% a rock roll. Just keep your weight back going in, shift your weight forward on the G out so you don't get bucked over the handlebars. And those are the five shoots of Bullet Dodger. Now, I am by no means a super skilled <laughs> uh, shoot rider. In fact, that, that's probably my weakest, uh, weakest, I don't know what to call it, technical feature, and the one that I am consistently the most afraid of. So, Bullet Dodger took me quite a while to work up to all those lines. Definitely wasn't the first year I moved here, probably wasn't even the first three. But with practice and being able to safely ride shoots, kind of in control, out of control, so to speak, you'll be able to conquer them and make it down to the bottom. Whew. All right, 10 points to anyone who gets this. Usually people go right around the rock, but you can actually romp through here and punch up. <laughs> Pretty fun. All right, back up.